history. And the main thing is that history has to be put in correct perspective. And that needs to be, I believe, noted, underlined, underscored the best that if in 615 Prophet Muhammad raised with divine authority the voice of equality, justice and fraternity, then it took another 600 years to come something as Magna Carta and then please remember in India also something happened in 1215 and that was Baba Farid with, came to Farid court and he also made a history and his whole message is nothing but fraternity, equality, brotherhood and all like that. And then constitution of India is a reflection of it. And these voices are elsewhere also and they have culminated into the document we call the constitution of India. We have with us luckily earlier a professor, then a judge and then the Chief Justice of India, Justice Jagdev Singh Kher with us. And I think this has been the best of the times coincidence when India was faced with a challenge for the independence of the judiciary. God had vested somewhere that potential to come up and then protect the independence of judiciary in India. And that's what we briefly can say about Honorable Mr. Justice Jagdish Singh Kher. Basically the point is that in inaugural session it is only inaugural and therefore we don't have much time. I directly request Honorable Mr. Justice Kher to kindly come over and inaugurate this program and deliver the inaugural address. Honorable Mr. Justice G.S. Kher. associated with this organization and when the organization contacted me to speak here, his name figuring in the patterns of the organization did not leave any room for me to decide one way or the other, I just had to accept. Mr. K. Rahman Khan, Member of Parliament, former Union Minister of Minority Affairs. Dr. M. Manzoor, Alam Chairman, IOS. Professor Z. M. Khan, Secretary General, IOS. Other esteemed dignitaries on the dais, foreign delegates, ladies and gentlemen. When the, organizers, when the organizers contacted me and told me that I had to speak on equity, justice and fraternity, I felt no problem. Because as a lawyer, A lot of my work was on the Constitution and related to Articles 14, 15 and 16. And when I became a judge, I was mostly on the writ court 
and dealing with the Constitution. But when I sat to decide what I need to say, I felt that the issue under consideration was a very complicated issue. When we decide in a court, the focus is limited. And when you deal with <clears throat> equality, or justice, you deal with the proposition that is placed before you. But when you consider equality, justice and fraternity with reference to contemporary India, I think the whole scenario is different. I had a lot of difficulty. in settling the issue which I had to speak about and therefore before I begin I must say that all the views that I express are my personal views. This is the way I understand this proposition. Equality like liberty is a prominent political idea <coughs> of the contemporary world, just like these gentlemen said. The French Revolution of 1789 was fought for liberty, equality and fraternity. It constituted the voice of the oppressed the voice against injustice and the voice for changing unfair social conditions. The problem of inequality has figured in political thought since the earliest times. <coughs> Aristotle felt that inequality was a cause of revolutions in many situations. He defined justice, so this is important. He defined justice as treating equals equally and unequals unequally. When I sat to think about this phrase, I wasn't sure whether I should include it in my speech or I shouldn't. Justice as being treating equals equally and unequals unequally changes the framework of your thought, changes the framework of your understanding. But then, equality itself is a very complicated issue. And by and by, as I researched into it, and I will narrate to you, I felt it was so. Because when the first time a professor lectured us on equality, he gave us an illustration. He put it on the board. A plan. The plank said, law of equality. What is the law of equality? Nothing. What was written there was, when a wife tells her husband, I'll be ready in five minutes. That 
is equal to when the husband tells the wife, I'll call you in five minutes. So the facets of equality are so diverse. And this political thought I was talking about, treating equals equally and unequals unequally. This statement recognized existing inequalities in the real society between master and slave, rich and poor, between morally superior and inferior, and so on. Large inequalities of wealth, prestige and power have always remained a prominent and almost universal feature, distinguishing individuals from the rest in social structures throughout human history. So when you complain about inequality, it's not a big deal. Over the years, scientific thinking about the existing structure of society has led to demand for social change. <coughs> Rousseau, in his discourse on the origin of inequality among men, wrote in 1755 that an important distinction between two types of in inequalities found in social life were natural inequalities and conventional inequalities. And he defined natural or physical inequalities as comprised of the difference of age, health, bodily strength, and qualities of mind and soul. But literally, literally, As a matter of nature, nothing about humans is equal. Nothing. Some people are better looking than others. We call it attractive inequality. Some people are more focused and motivated, and therefore they are better. We call it motivational inequality. Some people are more intelligent than others. We call it intellectual inequality. Some are more hardworking than others. Some are lazy. In the US they call it <coughs> stress or oh, sweat inequality. So it's a matter of nature that humans are unequal. Now from the natural or physical inequality to the conventional inequality. <coughs> Conventional inequality, on the other hand, consists of the different privileges that some could enjoy to their advantage over others. Illustratively, inequalities of wealth, prestige and power. The latter form of inequality is considered as the result of human endeavor. 